Well, good evening, everyone. Uh, Bob Cornell with you, and I just greet you in the name of the Lord. And such a uh, blessing to have uh, you with uh, just watching tonight or whatever time you're watching this. I want to get right into the word uh, this evening. This is just to let you know this is a substitute, uh, a virtual church. You could say a virtual message for what would normally happen on Tuesday evenings. Uh, our Bible studies here at Covenant Church in Murfreesboro, Tennessee, the Nashville, Tennessee area. And we're excited about what God is, is doing and what God is going to do. And we're looking forward to gathering together uh, again. But I, I want to get right into the word uh, this evening. In Romans, Romans chapter 8 and verse 1, Paul wrote this. He said, he said, There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk after the flesh, but after the Spirit. That has been in my heart all, man, I woke up this morning. Oh, it was in me. It's been in me all day long. There is not now, there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. You know, the, the word condemnation means a, a, a death sentence. Uh, some people have translated it, I mean it, think of it as guilt. There's no guilt. Uh, yeah, that's true. But more, more so, what it means is there's no death sentence over our life anymore. Why? It's because we are in Christ Jesus. And how did we get in Christ Jesus? We got in Christ Jesus through simple dependence in Jesus and what he accomplished for us at the cross. At the cross, he died for us. And we and died for our sins, and we believed in Him. Whenever that was, uh, uh, when you accepted Christ, you believed in Him, and at that moment, the Holy Spirit took you back 2,000 years, placed you in Christ Jesus, placed you into His death, placed you into His burial, placed you into His resurrection, and now you are in, you abide in Christ Jesus. And how does that all happen? It happens by our dependence, by our faith in who He is and what He's done for us at the cross. You know, I want to say this too, that, you know, as a child of God, God's plan for every single one of us is He has not called us to some dead, dry, cold uh, religion. That's not, that's not what He's called us to. He's called us to be full of the power of the Holy Spirit and walking in that fullness. He's called us to walk in victory over sin and the power of sin. He's called us to walk in victory over the spirits, over every evil spirit that is in this world. He's called us to live in victory over religious spirits. He's called us to live in victory over every lie of the enemy, over fear. Oh, that's a big one today because fear is a liar. Like that song says, fear is a liar. And there's been so much fear that's been running rampant in the world today. And even in many believers. And stress and, and you know what? Stress and fear, they lead to even physical sickness and even mental problems. But God has called us through the blood of Jesus to walk in victory over everything that would bring us down. Over fear, over every everything everything and today there is no condemnation over your life he's called us to walk in victory and that's only possible through our dependence in Jesus and what he's accomplished for us at the cross you see what I, I want to get I want to say some things here that are so very very important Paul wrote he said there is therefore now no condemnation whenever you read there whenever you read the word therefore in the bible you got to go before the therefore to find out really what to find and to understand properly what's written after the therefore and so before the therefore is romans chapter 7 in romans chapter 7 paul described what what I'll, I'll use this terminology. He described a works righteousness mentality. A works righteousness mentality. 
And when I talk about a works righteousness mentality, uh, I don't I don't talk about it from a perspective that you know I read it somewhere or I studied I just studied it in the Bible and I and I I find I found it there. Yes, it is there. We're gonna talk about it in Romans chapter seven in just a moment. But I talk about it from the perspective of I've lived it. I've lived that works righteousness uh, attitude mentality as a child of God loving him as a child of God even walking in the power of his Holy Spirit ministering under the anointing of the Holy Ghost seeing people saved and even seeing people baptized with the Holy Spirit and healed seeing that but still having a wrong mindset you mean believers can have that oh yes they can you mean the baptism with the Holy Spirit doesn't correct all those things? No, it doesn't. Because Jesus said, he would say in Romans, uh, John chapter 8, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And when Jesus talked about you shall know the truth, the truth, oh, the, the, the truth ultimately is what he gives us in his word his word is truth and there is a scarlet thread figuratively speaking there's a scarlet thread that runs throughout god's word and that scarlet thread is is god's redemption plan is jesus as the lamb of god dying on the cross for our sins and completing that victorious work over our sin and the sin of, the, of all the world and three days later, rising from the dead to prove how victorious he was. Mm. He has called you today to walk in victory. And I just want to declare it to you. You have victory through Jesus. You have Jesus is your victory. And he did it for you at the cross. Real quickly here, I could spend, we could spend hours talking about uh, this works righteousness mentality. But what Paul described in Romans chapter 7, again, this is the before, the therefore. He described himself as a child of God trying to get victory over the, the power of the sin nature that was within him by the means of his uh, accomplishing the law or what he thought was accomplishing the law. He said, I'm going to say that again. He described himself with a works righteousness mentality works righteousness righteousness basically is a uh, uh, thinking that we're or it's being right with God righteousness is the opposite of being wrong with God and a works righteousness mentality is thinking that through what I do I'm right with God or it can be on any level through what I do, I am more right with God. It's a, like a brownie point system. And Paul had that mindset, and we don't know, but most likely it was earlier on in his Christian life. And he, and, and he described Romans chapter 7, evil desires rising up within him. Just like every believer has. Why? It's because we're still in this body of flesh. We're, we haven't been raptured yet. We, we're, uh, as Paul would describe it in, in, in Philippians chapter 3, we haven't been made perfect yet. And so therefore, we still have this, what Paul would describe in Romans uh, or, uh, Galatians chapter 5 as the flesh that lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And as long as we are on this side of glory, we're going to have this, we're going to have the flesh. But I want to declare something to you today that through what Jesus did for us at Calvary, we don't have to walk according to the flesh. Those evil desires that are still in us because we haven't been raptured yet, those evil desires can be shut down. Doesn't mean we won't ever sin, but, but flesh and the sin nature will not have dominion over you because you were not under law, you were under grace. Paul said that in Galat uh, uh, Romans chapter 6 and verse 14. But in Romans chapter 7, he described himself at having these evil desires within him, and he used the, uh, the, the law, one of the Ten Commandments, for example, 
thou shalt not covet, which really could be interpreted, thou shalt not have evil desires. And that pretty much covers all of us. And Paul felt those evil desires within him. And, and evil desires, you know, when we think of evil lust, we, we normally go right to sexual immorality. But hear me this, uh, this evening. Their evil lust or covetousness uh, it does not is not only sexual morality it covers anything that is not in accordance with his word or God's will for your life if it's not in line in alignment with God's word his character or his will for your life that it is an evil lust now Paul fought, felt these evil lusts in his heart causing him to do things he he didn't want to do and, there, and what it was, it was the power of the sin nature that was within him that was more powerful than his willpower to say no to that sin. And Paul went to his, his what he knew, and that was the Bible in his time. That was the Old Testament. And... And he went to, thou shalt not covet. God said in his word, do not have evil desires. Paul felt these evil desires within him. And he knew what God said. God said, stop it. God said, you don't have evil desires. And, and all of the spiritual disciplines that are in the New Testament are also in the, in the Old Testament. Uh, like prayer. Uh, meditating upon God's word. Paul, very likely, he would have uh, went to, in his mind, uh, just possibly, most I, I believe, he would have went in his mind to Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8. Meditate upon the law. Don't stray from it. Don't go to the right or to the left. But medita meditate upon God's law and you shall have good success. You're going to prosper. And Paul, he would have understand. He would have understood Joshua, verses one, verse one, uh, chapter one, verse eight. But he would have understood it with a law or a works righteousness mentality. That if I just do that, I'll get victory over sin. But what Paul did not understand at that moment in Romans seven. But he would understand it. He understood it when he wrote Rome, the book of Romans. And, uh, he, and he understood this principle. That sin, the victory over sin, does not come by our works, our doing. It comes by the fact that Jesus already done it at the cross. That means your relationship with God is not doing your doing 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 your relationship with god is it's done it's done it's done jesus did it at the cross hallelujah and the cross is not a place of defeat it's a place of victory for you and i as a child of god that have placed our faith in him and are living by dependence in jesus christ and his finished work at calvary you know, Paul would write it this way in Galatians chapter uh, 2 and verse 21. He said, I do not set aside the grace of God, for if righteousness comes by law, then Christ died in vain. You could interpret it this way or say it this way. For if victory over sin comes by law or comes by my doing, because that's what law implied comes by my good works, my good doing, then Christ died in vain. If my right standing, uh, if, if my being right with God, again, comes by something that I do, even the doing of the spiritual disciplines that are in His Word that He tells us to do, that will be a benefit that will actually strengthen our faith in the cross. But if, I, if we are putting at all, if our dependence is in our doing, then our dependence is all wrong. And Paul would say, he would write in Galatians chapter 2, 21, if our dependence is in our doing, 
then Christ died in vain. He, and think about it for a moment. If, if the, our victory over the power of the sin nature and over everything, every, every spirit that's in this world, over our own flesh, as Paul would describe in Galatians chapter uh, 5 and verse uh, 16 and 17, that the lush, our lust, our own uh, flesh, it lusts against the, the spirit. And the Holy Spirit wars or lusts against the flesh. But then Paul would write in Galatians 5.24 that they that are in Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its lusts. Mm, hallelujah. And hear me today. Our victory, your victory over sin is only found in what Jesus did for you at the cross. That's where your victory is. That's where my victory is. Well, you, some would say, well, what do we do with the spiritual disciplines then? What do we do with that? Do we throw them out? Oh, you just, no, no, not at all. Do we need to pray? Of course. But why? It's because we're in relationship with God. If you're in relationship with someone, then you talk with them. That's what prayer is all about. That's what fasting is all about. Fasting is that place, is that activity. When, we're, when there is a, a, a especially a dire need or a, a, there is the Holy Spirit lays it upon your heart that you need to draw near to God. That's when we, that's, there's a fasting that's, that's required. Why? It's because he says it in his word. But fasting and prayer, reading of God's word, all those, and worship, being in the presence of God, all those things are wonderful, and they will be a blessing to our relationship with God. But those things are not the key. Those things did not give us victory over sin. Those things did not save us. They didn't give us the victory to begin with. And they're not the things that give us victory even now. Our victory is only found in the finished work of Jesus at the cross. So in Romans 7, Paul found himself trying to get victory over sin, but doing it all the wrong way. Uh, and I, I feel this in my spirit today that there may be some of you right now that you feel that. You have been, there's, there's sin or there's, or it, sin can manifest itself in so many different ways. When we think of sin, we think of you know big things like drinking alcohol, you know drunkenness, or smoking, or going to the to the casino, or sexual immorality, all kind of doing drugs, all those kind of things. You know what? But sin, yeah, those things are sin. But sin, as Jesus would say. In the, in the Sermon on the Mount can actually just be calling your brother a fool and degrading his char character, slandering a person's character. Jesus would say it's murder. Mm. Lying is a sin. Being dishonest is a sin. Fear in an ungodly way, being stressed out, focusing on what we see, feel, and hear, focusing on that, and, and then acting or living our life based upon what we see, feel, and hear in the natural, that is sin. And I'm, I'm preaching to myself. I'm not acting as one or preaching to you as if someone who doesn't do that. Yeah, I do that sometimes, and it's sin. But our victory over that sin is not found in our doing our victory over that sin is always found in Jesus and what he accomplished for us at Calvary. And so when we pray and when we get into his word and we come into his presence and we worship him, we worship and we pray, we, we fast, we do everything, we give, we give to him, we give to his work on the basis of our dependence in what he's already done because that has been said before relationship with god is not doing 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 it's done 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 and that's referring to what jesus did for us at the cross and paul in romans 7 he would he described himself 
trying to get victory over the power of the sin nature by by just stopping it. I'm not going to do it anymore. And he found that his that the power of the sin nature was stronger than his will power. Again, the power of the sin nature that was within him was stronger than his own will power. And most likely he was, at that time, he was baptized with the Holy Ghost, speaking in other tongues. But still, uh, his willpower is as, as good as intended as it was, was, is not stronger than the power of the sin nature within us. Again, if it was, then Jesus didn't have to die on the cross. He would have said, just pray for an hour a day. He would have said, fast your way through it. He would have said, read your Bible, read 30 chapters a day and you'll have and you'll have victory over sin. He would have said that and not had to die. But Jesus didn't say that. He had to die in our place as the Lamb of God to, to get the victory for us at the cross. And our victory today is, our, in, in, is not in our doing. Our victory is in what he did at the cross. So with that said, Paul, he said in, Ro in Romans chapter 7 and verse, and verse 25, he would write these words in Romans 7 and verse 25. He would say, but thanks be to God, but thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. The wind's blowing, I got my notes flying all over the place. <laughs> But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 25, I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. And he's talking about victory over sin. And then he writes, so therefore, there now there is no condemnation. Because my victory is in Jesus and my faith is in him right now that guilty sentence that death sentence is removed from your life it's removed and yeah there might be still conviction there but there's a difference between condemnation and conviction you know in condom in, in, excuse me in condemnation in in, in condemnation there is that's a death sentence over your life but with true conviction of the Holy Spirit, there's always hope. There's always hope with true conviction of the Holy Spirit. But with condemnation, there is no hope. Again, it's a, it's a de with, a, with a mindset of condemnation. There is no hope. The only hope there is is I've got to do something. I got to I got to do something to to erase my sin before God. And again, that many times that comes in the form of spiritual disciplines. I gotta pray, I gotta read the Bible, I gotta do so, I gotta get to church, I gotta worship, I gotta spend an hour, I gotta turn my worship CD on. And then after a while, that guilt, that guilty feeling goes away. You know what I'm talking about. You've sinned, you failed God, and you say, God forgive me, God forgive me, God forgive me. And you feel like you gotta say, God forgive me a hundred times before finally that guiltiness, that sense of guilt goes away. Have you ever done that before? You know what that mindset is? That doesn't come from God. That mindset comes from our own flesh or it comes from the devil. The devil will whisper that in your ear. You have not done enough to take away your sin. I want to tell you right now that before it will, will even when you sinned as a child of God now this is not this doesn't give us a license to sin but even when you sin you are still 100% justified legally righteous in the eyes of God I, again even when you're even while you're sinning you're still justified you're not you're not 99% justified 
you are still 100% justified. Now, that's a hard pill for some religious, for the works righteousness mindset to, to accept. No, 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 you're not, no, no, you're not right with God. Yes, oh yes, you are. You're still 100% righteous before God, and there still is no death sentence over your life. Well, what happens as a child of God when we sin? Well, this is what happens as a child of God when we sin. It hurts us. Sin, it gets in our spirit, it gets in our heart. And it muddies the water. I'll describe it that way. It muddies the water. It water. It, it muddies the purity of our spirit that 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 is there through the blood of Christ, through the presence of the Holy Spirit. Sin weakens our faith. It, it clouds our mind. It, it it clouds our discernment. It it. It clouds in our condition I'm talking about, not our position in Christ, in the heavenlies, but in our condition, it, it muddies us up. But what you know what God provided? He provided for us a way as a child of God to be, for our condition that is, to be clean, to be clean again, to be forgiven. As he said in 1 John chapter 1 and verse 1, verse 9, if you confess our if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Hmm. That's not talking about unbelievers, that's talking about believers. Notice what he said, he'll forgive us of our sins. Forgiveness, he'll forgive you. And he'll cleanse you, cleanse. He used that word cleanse there. The Holy Spirit led John to write that. He'll cleanse you. He, he's not talking about, again, your position. He's talking about your condition, your heart. He'll cleanse your mind. He'll cleanse your spirit from the, from the filthiness of that sin because that's what sin does. Sin is like dirt that corrupts. But when you go before God, he'll He'll take away that, that corruption in your heart, in your spirit, in your mind. He'll take it away. And he won't take it away after a hundred times of asking him to forgive you. When you go before God with a repentful heart, with a heart of sorrow, say, God, forgive me. I know I'm wrong. I acknowledge it before you. He takes it away. It, it's that, and he, In your spirit, it's gone. But you need to know this, that even when you there is no death sentence over your life and you don't have to go before God and, and perform a whole bunch of good works before God sees you as right again. No, you're right with him. And I just want to emphasize this point. There is no death sentence over your life. And you don't have to try to work your way into a right standing with God. You just have to come to God through the blood of Jesus by simple faith and say, God, forgive me. Thank you, Lord. Wash me clean. And he does it. He does it by his spirit. Based upon what Jesus did 2,000 years ago, he, did, he does it. And there is no condemnation right now. Right now. There's no death sentence over your life. Accept that today. Receive that today. There's no death sentence. Why? It's because Jesus took your death sentence upon himself. One of the greatest verses in the Bible is 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 21, where Paul would write, and I just want to read this. He said, for he made him, that's Jesus, for God made Jesus who knew no sin, to be made sin, to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in Him. That's what it means in Christ. We you know what that interpret that it doesn't mean, that doesn't mean that Christ became a sinner on the cross, but He became our sin offering at the cross. He made him who knew no sin. You see, Jesus didn't become a sinner. He didn't become vile. No, he was the perfect spotless lamb of God. 
but he took the penalty of our sin, your sin, upon himself so that you could become viewed and you could become 100% righteous in the eyes of God so that when God sees you, he sees you just like he sees his son Jesus. Why? It's because you believe in Jesus and you've been placed in Christ Jesus. There is now therefore no condemnation, no death sentence over your life because you're in Christ Jesus. Mm, receive that today. Then Paul would write in Romans chapter 8 and verse 1, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. What does that mean? I'm just going to abbreviate it to you. It simply means walking after the flesh is basically, as Paul would describe it in Romans chapter 7, walking after the flesh is basically walking after our own righteousness. Believe, thinking, believing in our own, our what we do makes us right with God. That's walking after the flesh. Walking after the flesh is not is not a, It's yes, it can. It's 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 walking. It can be walking after a worldly mindset. But even that is law because if you walk according to a worldly mindset, that's the law of me. I'm going to live life my way. You know what that is? I'm going to live life my way. That's a law. That's a law of you. I'm going to live life my way. But that's that that can be secular. That can be worldly. But can all but, uh, but can uh, it can also be religious. I got to be right. I'm going to be right. Get right back with God. I sin and I'm going to get right with God. Based on what I do, I'm going to go to church. I'll, I'll read the Bible. I'll pray. I'll fast, and all those things will make me right with God. That is a fleshly mindset a spiritual the true mindset of the spirit walking according to the spirit is living with a mindset in that in that my victory is not in my doing but in what Jesus already did at the cross do you receive that today uh, that's 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 the word that's the Bible. I'm not telling you what somebody said in the book. That's, that's the word of God. God said that. That's God. Walking according to, to the flesh, the spiritual mindset, is a mindset that is dependent in Christ and his finished work at the cross. And do we pray? Do we do all the, of course, yes, yes, we do. And believers, believers need to be told to pray. Why? It's because we see that in God's Word. Pray. Seek the face of God. And if you're really, if we are really, I caught myself, if we are really walking by faith in the finished work of Calvary, depending upon Him for our righteousness and joy and victory and abundant life and blessing and favor and anointing and everything comes through the blood, then you know what? There'll be a desire in us that really it opens the door for the Holy Spirit to work in our life and influences, influence our heart in such a way that we will want to pray. But even if by your flesh you don't want to pray because you believe, right? There'll be obedience there to pray. And obedience... Obedience is not always, it doesn't always feel good. But even when you don't feel like it, you need to seek the face of God. Even when you don't feel like it, you need to get into His Word. You need to worship Him. Why? It's because all those things will, feed, will fuel our faith in the right object. And, and that's Jesus and what He did for us at Calvary. I want to leave you with that today. That... Your victory is only found in what Jesus did for you at the cross. It's not in your doing. I want to say it again. True relationship, according to God's word, true relationship with God through Jesus Christ is not a doing, doing, doing relationship that your righteousness is based on your doing. Your victory is based on your doing. No, no, that's not it at all. That's religion. But relationship is 
faith. I, I believe that he already did it. Because he did it, because he loved me first, I love him back. We love him because he first loved us. And do I do? I do? do I work? Oh, yes, I do. And we need to work. We need to work in this time. We need to go. Two-thirds of God's name is go. We need to go. Preach the gospel. Live the gospel. We need to pray. Worship. All those things with our faith anchored in the finished work of Calvary. God bless you. God loves you. Let your faith be fed and fueled with the love of God that he has for you that was manifested to the cross. He absolutely loves you today. God loves you. Have a wonderful evening in Christ Jesus.